and welcome to blog number three, me learning to play the Anglo Concertina. And there I was playing uh, a tune called The Irish Washerwoman, uh, just the first part of it, very slowly. And I've come to uh, a bit of a decision here, and that is that if I'm going to continue this, I'm definitely going to have to get a better concertina because, uh, like I said before, part of the problem is my technique, but this is pretty slow and turgid. It's pretty hard work. Okay, I can't expect much more for 79 pounds, I know. Uh, but it's pretty slow and turgid. So I'm probably gonna start, either I will stop playing the Anglo Concertina and I'll play uh, this sort of thing on my melodians or I'll just concentrate on the English or uh, I'll get a really good uh, Anglo or a much better Anglo. But anyway, I shall persevere, uh, never say die. So this is the Irish Washerwoman in G and it's just a straightforward tune. Um, a lot of it on the left hand side because I want to keep it fairly low. So I'm opening the bellows out quite a long way to start. There's a lot on the push. And then I'm using that um, uh, C row there to get those A's and that D, yeah. And then a sort of combination of the two coming up to the D on the right hand side there. Then I go back to the first bit. And the end part is very easy. I do quite like the feel of playing it this way uh, with the ins and the outs and the different rows. It's quite fun, it's quite interesting. So the notes from lowest to highest that I use in this tune are D uh, pushing on the um, G row and also get the same note uh, pulling on the C row, okay, so uh, just to remind you, G row lowercase letters, uh, C row capitals, um, then coming out from that I've got a G on the G row, pushing in, um, I've got uh, an A on the C row, pulling out, then I've got B on the G row, Pushing in, I also get the same note on the C row on the right hand side, pulling, okay. Um, I've got the D on the G row, pushing, and the same note on the C row, pulling, and the highest note in the tune is the E on the G row, pulling. So not a great deal of notes in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. I've also tabbed out my version of Go Tell Aunt Rody in the key of C to show the kind of umpa single bass uh, and chord pattern of the left hand with the tune on the right. This particular tune, the tune is all on the right. The melody line's all here. And the uh, backing for that with the bass is all on the left hand side. And it's a simple matter of a single bass note and two notes played together. So that's my sort of C chord. C, okay, button one uh, on the C row pushing in. And then C an octave higher, button three pushing in with E. So that's my um pa, okay, in the key of C for the chord of, chord of C major. And then when I pull out those two buttons, uh, they become D and F, and it's kind of um, a G7 chord. Okay, especially if I uh, play that first button pulling out. Sometimes it's kind of a mixture of the two. I, I, tend, I play the, the C bass pushing in, followed by the D and the F pulling out. It all depends on the right hand. So the left hand on its own sounds like this. It sounds a little strange, let's put the two together, shall we? And the notes
notes from lowest to highest where you've got C and G on that same button there. Um, and you've got C and D on the same button there. And you've got uh, E and F on the same button there. That's all the kind of the, the accompaniment, the bass, if you like. And on the right hand side, you've got C there, D and E on the same button, and F and G on the same button there. Remember, capital letters, it's the front row, it's the um, C row, and if uh, a note has a minus sign to the left of it, it's played on the drawer or the pull. So it's a very simple uh, version of Go Tell Aunt Rody in the key of C, but I've actually tabbed it out and you can download it from my website. The problem I've got here are, of course, the buttons are pretty slow, uh, sometimes they get a little bit stuck, not stuck right in, but they kind of grate against the side and I have to sort of pull them out. You know, it, it is what it is. It's a budget concertine. Anybody watching this, um, I'd say to you, and I should, I really ought to know better having had years of buying instruments, you know, you get what you pay for. This is what it is and I will need to get something a lot better if I am to progress. It's a bit like my guitar students at school. You know, they often come to school with practically unplayable guitars, I mean, you know, really terrible, really high actions, and they say to me, oh, my mum said I wouldn't buy me a, a decent one, just in case I didn't take to it. Well, obviously, they're never gonna take to it unless they've got something that's uh, remotely playable. Well, this is definitely playable, uh, but it's just a bit on the slow side. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully this won't be my last blog on the Anglo Constantine. I, I doubt that it will be. So I've got lots of other pieces that I'm practicing, but I'm not going to put those up until I can actually play them. But there we are, that is blog number three, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>